My name is Anne Rudder, and I'm a heraldic artist. The piece that we're going to describe, called Betsy Lemon, Setting Together, Quilting Softly, was recipient of the Best Craft Fine Craft Award this year in 2010. I am motivated to present artwork that usually offers history behind the heraldry. This year, a slightly different outcome are the two seven and a half foot by 30 inch textile panels that present a visual story about our Barbadian ancestral and craft heritage. Additional connections between the sea islands of South Carolina are reflected in these exhibitions. Multiple mediums have been utilized to create this subtle African-American quilt. A short list of the collected materials includes antique hand crochet and embroidery, basketry, hand dyed lace, wooden beadwork, etc. Further fabric ingredients are color enhanced cotton sheeting, burlap, canvas, denim, gingham, chambray, eyelet, wool, African fabrics, seashells and cowries, rolled ribbon roses, needlepoint crosses and antique buttons. I have fashioned petite sailors valentines, flower samplers, and two bluebird of happiness doilies from collected Barbadian flea market sales. A bit about the history of the piece. The central focus is the social history forever remembered on nine Barbados postal cards, plus a very special photo of my Barbadian grandparents, Miss Clarice M. Perkins and Mr. Gordon Escort Stout, dressed for their wedding day near their Tudor Street residence. The 19th century looking back images of our ancestors have been resized and machine screened in a sepia tone to better personalize the photographs. Now, as referenced on page 33 of Freedmen of Barbados by Handler, Hughes and Wiltshire, is the entry Betsy Lemon, mulatto, born a slave, manumitted in 1796 and opened a tavern in Bridgetown. Therefore, you, the viewer, is within the setting parlor of Madame Lemon. The lemon yellow fabric becomes the background of her panels of remembrance to honor her companions and some of those less fortunate. However, in contemporary terms, they are tradesmen, craftswomen, agricultural field workers and garment designers who do dress up pretty pretty on their wedding day. These were the roles for Negro people taken for granted and paid for a pittance within an enslaved society. The written text from the narrative Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs describes in poignant detail the cruelest commerce of human trafficking. A second installment offers a clue to the optimistic future freedom. A committed religious foundation is the amazing grace. Now the pastime of quilting was a colorful side note in the lives of African slaves from the 18th century and in the Negro quarters of the Carolinas. Quilts are a prize of Sea Island life today. Every scrap of found fabric was recycled to become a new heritage item. When cloth pieces were carefully placed, they were termed setting together, as were the mothers and sisters, aunties and grand-grands, and the few young'uns who learnt at their knees at the quilting bee. Few slaves could read nor write, so their heritage was told in the story quilt. I have painted the crochet needlepoint crosses rose red as to remind of the blood of Jesus to honor those who have traveled before we. The blue collars of the Negro field workers' outfits are of chambray and African cotton patched with denim. In the future, this slang term and its implications becomes the labor union workforce to earn blacks the right to vote. Now, green for growth brings flowers from local Bayesian embroidery. Tiny handmade raffia baskets hold the fruits of their labors. The plaid ribbon makes a note of scotch bonnet peppers and an African Sankofa bird and the bluebirds create a looking back at our Barbadian craft industry. So therefore, do enjoy my soft quilting samplers and try to remember clothes without buttons. 
which are also used as money to denote status in our recent bygone days. Thoughts that we've given about the history behind the heraldry of the quilt, I'll show you some details that I've placed on these two items. Now, here's a nice picture. It was a small two by three of my late grandparents, Clarice Perkins and Gordon Escort Stout. This is at their Tudor Street residence on Roebuck Street, and I got that from my mother's birth certificate. Now, what's interesting that you can't quite see on this photograph, there was a cleaning lady standing behind my grandparents, and there's some laundry hanging out the window, which I thought was real sweet for a nice wedding photograph. But in comparison with my grandparents' wedding, we have on a second panel another wedding day. And we're just showing how the handmade use of, of fabric is international between the different classes of Barbados. The beautiful lady in this photograph has got a complete veil and a train on her dress. She's got a sweet, sweet flower girl. And even her groomsman is wearing gloves. So therefore, we can say that regardless of who you were in station in old Barbados, you just made your clothes by hand, you praised the Lord Jesus Christ, and you went smartly on their wedding day. Now we have some other photographs at the top of the quilt that show indentured workers doing two field occupations. The panel that you're looking at showing about a family of five and they're heading Sea Island Cotton. They've got their raffia baskets, similar to those that Irika Jelani does her treatments today of. And we have on the other panel a gang of weeders, as it said in the reference book, a gang of weeders. Now, the materials that they're wearing are the gingham and the chambray and the pillow ticking cottons, osnaburg, calico and such. The photographs make the fabrics always look white. Probably traditionally they are blue dyed materials and natural fiber fabrics. But underneath each of the two photographs that I've put on the top of the quilt, we see two women in their Sunday best, finest clothing and uh, millinery and such, probably again made by the women themselves. Now, it's, we have a catch-22 here. We see the historical photographs showing the indentured workers, but we do not see them as much dressed up in their smart garments. And this is the, the, why these two photographs are right with each other. Now here we have a very poignant photograph. I've always loved this. This young girl is selling the Chalky Mount Pottery Monkey Jars. This is one of the historical art forms which you can still see very prevalent and cherished in homes and shops in the contemporary Barbados. But I love the fact that in this time, so as circa around 1880 or 1890, in contemporary times, she would be called a craftsman and not just a hawker. We have another hawker who's also uh, selling vegetables in probably Bridgetown or Swan Street or Tudor Street. Again, this person is using handmade raffia baskets made from pandanus grass, couscous grass woven. The traditional styles that Irika Jelani does with roots and grasses is indicative of one of the Barbados historical art forms that lives prevalently today. Below this photograph of the hawker selling the vegetables, I show another woman carding Sea Island cotton. Yes, the workers are heading the cotton and picking it. The first thing then is to card it with two uh, kind of scratch cloths together. You're trying to get the seeds and the twigs out. Then from this particular uh, presentation, it goes onto a spinning wheel with a teasel, and you're pulling out the fibers, constantly pulling out the fibers to then make spun cotton th threads. And then from that, you have to weed the fabric. And from that, you have to cut the fabric. And from that, you have to make the garments. So you couldn't quite go to Price Mart and get yourself a suit of clothes. You'd have to start it from the beginning. Now, with this reference, I have a point of using buttons. With all of that making your handmade garments, you were lucky to have a button on a shirt. There weren't any. Uh, slaves had to use twigs. They were lucky if they could get a piece of bent steel. Maybe somebody would give them a safety pin. So with the advent of buttons, probably in mid-19th century, they weren't even used as they were uh, designed for. They were used more as a commodity item that you would trade buttons for things. You could trade. So this is why we, we this is another common place. We don't even think that, that in times gone by there were no buttons on your clothing. 
Now with that, I have uh, the, the items that you see on the quilt were all made by Barbadians. Though I have found them from craft projects and flea market sales and jumble sales, but I've purchased pieces that were made by Barbadians. These are all lost craft forms which are now disappearing. You have your embroideries, your needlepoint, your cruel work. You have hand-painted doilies and screen doilies. This I've put with the Sankofa bird from the African and the European influence. So these are bluebirds of happiness. There are two doily quilts on each panel piece. And from this also we've got the miniature baskets which have added fruits to again make the statement that Barbados, Barbados has always been able to reference itself as an agricultural society being able to feed itself. We're going to have to come back to these basic roots also. Again, the bright lemon fabric gives us the appearance of being in the setting of parlor of Betsy Lemon. We have wooden buttons across the top, made of wood, another, another presentation. And I've fashioned some sailors' valentines. One can look in the Barbados Museum and see the actual sailors' valentines, which could be all of 12 inches across. They were quite large, totally covered in all seashells. And actually, the, uh, if the uh, Royal Navy sailors that were in Barbados in the 19th century and 18th century, they would craft them themselves. This art form is a male art form, and they are crafting them, and they are sending them back by ship to their sweethearts in England. So these are some of the items that I've used on the quilt. I hand dyed this uh, lace to match the machine lace on the other one. And I do enjoy, I hope you enjoy the Betsy Lemon setting together, quilting softly. There's one final note I'd like to make because as referenced in the book Sea Island Roots, talking about the African American presence, the African presence by the way, in Carolinas and in Georgia, an early entry on page 9 does refer in two sentences on page 9. The first European arrivals are explorers and adventurers for the most part. Later, however, plantation owners from Barbados and other Caribbean islands disembarked, bringing with them their households and enslaved Africans to settle in the Ashley River and other parts of South Carolina in the 17th century. Therefore, some of the art as presented by Irika Jelani and Ann Rudder with basketry or quilts, which is referenced further in the book, these are some of the historical art forms that Barbados did bring to the United States of America from Barbados in the 1670s, quilting and basketry. Thank you so much. <laughs>